Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. In the top stories we're tracking for you on Friday, the 17th of January. India's Prime Minister Modi meets top EU diplomat in New Delhi. Maldives faces risk from climate change, says Foreign Minister. And women dancers break taboo to perform in conservative Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday met top European Union diplomat Joseph Borrell in capital New Delhi. Both the leaders held talks of mutual interest aimed at strengthening ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday met High Representative of the European Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy Joseph Borrell in capital New Delhi. Both the leaders held talks of mutual interest aimed at strengthening ties. Borrell, who is also the Vice President of the European Commission to India, later took to Twitter and said, India and the EU share common values and interests. We will work together for stronger economic ties to fight climate change and to defend multilateralism. The top EU diplomat earlier also met India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar in the national capital. Borrell arrived in India on Thursday to give a valedictory speech at the Raisina Dialogue. The three-day conference that concluded on Thursday was hosted by the Observer Research Foundation in collaboration with India's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Maldivian Foreign Minister Abdullah Shaheen has said that his country may lose entire islands unless it can be quickly access cheap financing to fight the impact of climate change. The island nation at the UN climate talks in Madrid last year had pushed for concrete progress on fresh funding to help deal with the longer term damage linked to climate change but failed. The tropical Maldives may lose entire islands unless it can quickly access cheap financing to fight the impact of climate change, Maldivian Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid has said. The minister made the remarks on Thursday in an interview on the sidelines of the Raisina Dialogue, a multilateral conference held in Indian capital New Delhi. At the UN climate talks in Madrid in December last year, the Maldives had pushed for concrete progress on fresh funding to help deal with longer-term damage linked to climate change but failed. Many islands, the islands have been taken away by the sea. So in order to protect the islands, we need to start building sea walls. It's an expensive uh, thing. But uh, we need it. Uh, some of the islands have been taken away. Uh, the, we can't wait until all of them are taken away. Former Maldivian President Mohamed Nasheed famously held a cabinet meeting underwater to draw attention to submerging land and global warming a decade ago. Yet the Maldives, best known for its white sands and palm fringe atolls that draw luxury hotel makers, has struggled to find money to build critical infrastructure like sea walls. In 2004, the Indian Ocean tsunami ravaged the country, causing financial losses of around $470 million and heating infrastructure, including its only international airport, that was shut for several days. In news from Pakistan, the National Accountability Bureau on Thursday approved the filing of references against Pakistan's former Prime Ministers Nawaz Sharif and Sayyid Rusuf Raza Gilani, and former President Asif Ali Zardari. The anti-corruption body said the trio allegedly misused the government's storehouse of gifts and vehicles during their tenures. The Executive Board Meeting of Pakistan's National Accountability Bureau or NAB on Thursday authorized filing fresh corruption references against former Prime Ministers Nawaz Sharif and Sayyid Yusuf Raza Gilani, 
and former President Asif Ali Zardari for allegedly causing losses worth billions of rupees to the National Exchequer. The anti-corruption body said the suspects have been accused of receiving gifts and vehicles from the government in violation of rules and regulations which inflicted losses to the National Exchequer. In July 2019, the NAB had interrogated Nawaz Sharif related to the luxury vehicles and bulletproof vehicle references. Local media reports quoted Sharif said that during his tenure he submitted all the gifts he received in the National Treasury. As far as vehicles were concerned, as Premier, it was his legal and constitutional right to use them. The NAB had also accused last year that Zardari in connivance with Gilani took cars from the government storehouse and also paid duty on the said vehicles from fake bank accounts, the trial of which is currently underway. More news from Pakistan. Extreme weather conditions have gripped Pakistan and at least 75 deaths have been reported in the country up till now. Record low temperatures are severely affecting the country's poorest, exposing them to the cold, which has already killed dozens in other areas. Harsh winter conditions have gripped Pakistan with rain and snowfall continuing in many parts of the country, which is being termed as one of the worst winters Pakistan has witnessed. Record low temperatures in Pakistan are severely affecting the country's poorest, exposing them to the cold which has already killed dozens in other areas. Those living in slums in Karachi, a port city of moderate climate, have been lighting bonfires to keep themselves warm and protected. In cities, shops are packed with second-hand winter clothes that are sold as quickly as they are put on display. The Pakistan Meteorological Department reported earlier this week that the cold wave will last until January 18 and the temperature is expected to drop as low as 3 degrees Celsius in Karachi. The death toll from Monday's avalanches in Nilam Valley in Pakistan administered Kashmir rose to 74, according to officials, as rescuers continued to recover bodies. Following reports that the Taliban could agree for a temporary reduction of violence in Afghanistan, Spokesman for the group Sohel Shaheen has said, talks between the Taliban and U.S. negotiation teams were useful and could continue for a few days in Doha. Spokesman for the Taliban Suhail Shaheen has confirmed that the negotiators from the United States and the Taliban have resumed talks in Doha and are discussing the signing of the peace deal over the past two days. Shaheen in a tweet on Friday said Afghan peace talks between the Taliban and U.S. negotiation teams were useful and would continue for a few days in Doha. Peace talks between Taliban militants and the United States, which were earlier called off in September by U.S. President Donald Trump, had resumed after Trump visited U.S. troops in Afghanistan in November. Later, the talks were again put on pause following an Taliban attack on a U.S. base outside Kabul, which killed two civilians. This comes a day after Afghan State Minister for Peace Affairs Salam Rahimi rejected the alleged Taliban position for a temporary reduction of violence, calling it unacceptable for the government. Rahimi has said that the insurgent group must agree to a ceasefire before engaging in intra-Afghan talks as no tangible result was achieved from the U.S. efforts for the Afghan peace process over the past one year. If an agreement is reached during Doha talks, the move could revive hopes for a long-term solution to the conflict in Afghanistan. In a conservative vote on Afghanistan, where it is generally considered taboo for women to dance in front of men, a dance troupe of Afghan female dancers is breaking frontiers. In a conservative vote on Afghanistan, where it is generally considered taboo for women to dance in front of men, 23-year-old Fahima Mirzahi, along with her troupe, is breaking frontiers. On a rooftop in Kabul, Fahima is taking on centuries of social taboos. She twirls around and around in an ancient doll called Sama, 
part of a mystical tradition called Sufism dating back to the 13th century. But religious conservatives see it as heretical. Last year, Fahima set up a dance school in Kabul. It was an act of defiance in a society that still frowns on women dancing in public. She has also faced growing pressure from religious conservatives. مخالف بیشتر شده خصوصا بنیادگرایی که در کشور وجود داشته اونا هیچ دنیا سیاسفید میبینن از چشم خود و هیچ رنگ دیگر قبول ندارن ما با مواجه شدیم با وضعیه هایشان که عملا اگر روبرو نیامدن نگفتن پشت صحنه حرفای زدن که اینا نباید وجود داشته باشه اینا نباید باشن چیزی که ما میخوایم بگم ما برای دور کردن مردم نیومدیم که ما بین مردم اختشاش ایجاد کنیم ما آمدیم تا مردم رو وصل کنیم Following the US led overthrow of the Taliban in 2001 women in Afghanistan won crucial rights but in recent years the Islamist group has gained ground and with the potential peace deal with the US in the works Fahima is facing the possibility of losing hard fought freedoms She says regardless of what happens in the future she will continue leading her troop on the search for inner peace Coast Guards of India and Japan are participating in a joint exercise of the Chennai coast in southern India The 5 day long exercise will mark demonstrations of search and rescue fire fighting and training to deal with attempted occupation of a ship by pirates A joint naval drill Sahyog Kaijin is being held between Indian and Japanese coast guards in India's southern coastal Chennai city to bolster defense ties and mutual understanding. Coast Guard officials from both the countries are participating in the 5-day exercise with the Japanese ship Echigo among other ships and an aircraft of the Indian Coast Guard. Members of the coast guards of both sides are training to deal with fire incidents as well as an attempted occupation of a ship by pirates. we have uh, injected an exercise to deal with the piracy which subsequently turns into the fire which subsequently translates into the rescue of the people crew the joint exercise comes under a memorandum of cooperation signed between the coast guards of india and japan in 2006 concerns are growing worldwide over climate change with people raising their voices against global warming In an effort to make people understand about its impact, a match of ice hockey was recently organized in India's Ladakh region. Authorities in India's northern Ladakh region organized a match of ice hockey recently to raise awareness among people about climate change and its impact. The game saw players including women show off their skating and hockey skills at the rink as they came together to give out a message to the world about issues concerning the environment. The match named The Last Game was organized by Ladakh Winter Sports Club, Ladakh Women Ice Hockey Foundation and played between Team India and United Nations. Last game ka matlab ye hua ki iske baad क्लाइमेट चेंज हो रहा है ग्लोबल वार्मिंग भी हो रहा है और ऐसा ना हो कि कल को आइस ना रहे और आइस नहीं रहने की वजह से हम आइस हॉकी नहीं खेल पाएंगे ये इसी आइस हॉकी की मध्यम से हमने ये मैसेज दिया है पूरे लद्दाख को पूरे हिंदुस्तान को पूरे वर्ल्ड को कि ग्लोबल वार्मिंग को कैसे कम किया जाए सबका इसमें सहयोग होना चाहिए कम करने के लिए so generous they so kind about uh, environment and about the game you know they love the game more than anybody and uh, yeah it's a came to support them scientists say climate change is likely to have contributed to severe weather last year india has faced some of the fastest rising threats from climate change environmentalists say with increases in blistering heat powerful cyclones droughts and flooding Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.